Well, hello, Scrappers. Welcome back to my channel, Mike here. And uh, in a previous series of videos, which I'll put a link to in the upper right, um, I showed you how you can recover tin from e-waste. It was a very popular request. A lot of people wanted to know how to do that. You know, I'd be doing the silver and the gold recovery, and people would say, hey, that's great, but, you know, tin is really valuable. I want to know how to get the tin. So I've got a whole series of videos now on a method for getting tin out of your e-waste, okay? And as those videos were coming out, guess what? People started sending me requests. They say, oh, okay, that's great, tin. I want to know how to get the lead, too. And I'm thinking, lead? Well, okay. Um, it's actually pretty easy to recover. Um, but I don't think, I'm going to say this up front. Okay, so there's no confusion. I don't think you're going to find this economical. And I don't think you're going to get very much lead. Okay, because of something called the Rose Act, which was the Reduction of Harmful Substances Act, which was enacted in Europe in the very early 2000s. And it mandated the removal of cadmium, lead, and a bunch of other stuff from electronics, okay? And the rest of the world got on board with that so they could sell their products in Europe. So unless you're processing a whole lot of very old electronics, you're probably not going to get much lead out of it because for the last 20 some years, the amount of lead in electronics has been going down, 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 down to where it's practically nothing now. Now you might get a little bit of lead out, but it's not going to be enough to be economical um in my humble opinion on a hobby scale if you want to do it for fun go right ahead and i'll show you how you can get the lead out because lead is pretty easy to get out you know when we're doing gold we add a little bit of sulfuric acid to the aqua regia and that causes any lead present to drop out as lead sulfate which is insoluble in water well, in previous videos where I showed you how to strip the solder off of circuit boards by soaking them in dilute muriatic acid, okay, and then once the solder's all stripped, you filter the liquid, and, well, I added a little bit of sulfuric acid to that, too, to recover any lead, just to get it out of there, because I didn't want it contaminating the tin. And then, of course, I would take the, the liquid after the, the lead has dropped out, refilter it to get rid of the lead sulfate. Then I would neutralize the liquid with some sodium hydroxide solution to get the tin to drop out as tin oxide. Okay. But if we go back a couple of steps to where we're getting the lead out with the sulfuric acid, you can do that every time, okay? You can get your tin and you can get your lead too. It's not that hard to separate them. So, I mean, I've got some solution here that uh, this has been recovered from dissolving the solder off of circuit boards, okay? So it's got tin in it, but it's also got lead in it. So let's put a little bit of sulfuric acid in here and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It makes like a little bit of a milkshake. So we've got some lead sulfate in there that's going to drop out a solution for us. So you go away for a while, you come back, and your lead sulfate has all settled to the bottom of the beaker. It actually doesn't take very long because it's pretty down heavy. I mean, hey, it's a lead compound. It's dense, right? So, and you got a nice little layer of lead sulfate down on the bottom of the beaker. I don't know how well it's showing up. It's maybe a couple millimeters thick, okay? So that's really not very much. Um, there's a lot more tin in here than there is lead. So when I precipitate that out, I'm going to get a fair amount of tin oxide. But we're only getting a little bit of lead. And this is the result of a whole lot of circuit boards, okay? Some of them were pretty old, which is probably where the lead came from. A lot of the modern ones probably didn't have very much lead in them at all, but uh, we got some lead. So, 
what I would recommend doing next, if you want to insist on going down this path, is, uh, you know, filter the liquid, capture the lead. Um, I would wash it multiple times with some distilled water to try and get, uh, well, the tin out of it and any other um, trace metals that are in there, like there might be some iron in here, there might be some copper, you know, wash it to wash those the, those trace metal solutions out of there. And then um, dry it out. And, and now you're up against the next big challenge of how to convert this lead sulfate down here back into lead metal. Okay. And it's not a trivial problem. This is not something you're going to do in your kitchen with um, easily available stuff. Uh, I've done a little bit of experimenting on this, and uh, some things work and some things don't, okay? So I'll show you some of what I've done to try and recover the lead from the lead sulfate. And, and like I said, some things don't work, and I would not recommend going down that path. So the question next arises, if you've got some lead sulfate you've precipitated out of your solution from e-waste here, how to turn it back into lead metal? Well, I had such good luck using thermite with tin to recover lead metal from tin oxide. I thought, well, I wonder if I could do something similar with lead sulfate. Now, it wouldn't technically be a thermite reaction because we're not dealing with an oxide here. We're dealing with a sulfate. But, you know, clever boy that I am, I, you know, did a little Googling and did a little uh, back-of-the-envelope ciphering and figuring here and came up with um, a formula, a presumed formula for a stoichiometric mixture of aluminum flake and lead sulfate that should result in the production of aluminum sulfide, aluminum oxide, and free lead. Not knowing whether this was even going to work, I took all of the lead sulfate I had at the time, okay, which was about 35 grams. That's all I had accumulated at the time, all right? And I mixed it with the right amount of aluminum flake over here. And what happened next when I lit it off? Well, I'm probably lucky to be alive. Let's put it that way. It went off just short of a bomb. So, uh, yeah, it is a very energetic reaction. I'll show you the remains. Yeah, I like to do a lot of off-camera R&D and just sort of perfect something before I film it. Although, I'd get a lot better blooper reels, I think, if I filmed all my R&D work, too. So here's the flower pot that I put my 35 grams of lead sulfate and uh, uh, about 10.4 grams of aluminum in, mixed it up thoroughly, put it in there, lit it with a, uh, um, a fuse of magnesium wire, just like I did with my thermite reactions, and stood back, I don't know, 15 feet maybe, not really expecting the process to work because I didn't, I couldn't find any info on whether this process would work or not. I doubt I've invented it, but, you know, lead sulfate, aluminum flake, is it going to work? Is anything going to happen? I'll tell you what, as soon as the fuse burned down to the pile of material in that flower pot, it went off in a fraction of a second. Blinding light. I had after images for like the next half hour. I don't remember the last time I've seen anything that bright. Looking at the sun isn't that bright, okay? Huge, huge cloud of vapor, smoke, dust, whatever, exploded out of this flower pot. I was fortunate. I positioned myself upwind. So I figured there might be some lead vapor coming out of there. I didn't know every freaking thing was going to get vaporized. There was nothing left in this flower pot except red hot sand. Everything else was vaporized, and some of the sand, I think, got vaporized too. It's all gone. There's nothing there. There's no slag. 
There's no lead. There's nothing. It's all gone. I wish I'd gotten that on film. That'd probably get me a million views. But uh, anyway, <laughs> I've taken it a lot easier since then. Smaller quantities, okay? Uh, much smaller quantities, just experimenting. And we'll take a look at uh, one of those. We'll set one of those off, although I'm really reluctant to do too many of these because I'm probably spreading a lot of lead around the environment here. But uh, we'll see if we can tame this reaction at all. If not, we'll try something else. But we're going to have to tame it a lot because it is a very energetic reaction. All righty, let's set off a small 10-gram charge. This is a good day to do it. There's nobody around the farm at the moment. I don't have to worry about a big cloud of vapor drifting over the workers. All right, so I've got a nice long magnesium ribbon here to act as a fuse, and I'm going to angle it out like this. Um, away from the center of the pile. I, I put them in straight up and down before, and I've had a problem where a blob of burning magnesium will drop off into the pile before the ribbon burns down. I don't want this going off before I can get to a safe distance. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move upwind after I light it and endeavor to stay upwind of the cloud wherever it goes. And we'll see what this looks like. Oh, much slower burning than my earlier test. That didn't go off like flash powder. So, yeah, there's some significant variations between batches. Some burn fast, some burn slow. I'm not sure why. So here's the remains of that test I just showed you, and uh, picking through it, I don't find any trace of metal. There is no free metal here. There's no lead. There is some slag. It's light and fluffy, though. Not like the slag we got with the tin thermite. Um, I'm pretty sure the reaction went off just as I expected. Um, I can smell hydrogen sulfide coming out of this, which tells me we did produce aluminum sulfide because aluminum sulfide reacts with moisture in the air to produce hydrogen sulfide. But where's the lead? Well, in spite of this being much less violent than my early test, we may still be getting so hot that we're vaporizing the lead entirely. I don't know. But I certainly don't see it anywhere. There aren't any really hard lumps in here. That's a piece of the magnesium ribbon there that didn't burn. It's kind of surprising, um, given the heat of the reaction. But I don't see any lead. And I'm not sure why some batches burn so much faster and more violently than others. I did have one thought. I don't know how um, accurate it would be, but it's possible that some of my batches of lead sulfate are more or less contaminated with um, lead chloride. And lead chloride, I'm assuming, although again, I don't have any good information on it like I didn't have with lead sulfate, 
but I'm assuming that lead chloride will react pretty violently with aluminum powder. So it's possible that uh, batches that have a fair amount of lead chloride in them might react much more violently than batches that don't. So uh, they're both insoluble lead salts, so it's possible you'll get some lead chloride with your lead sulfate. And it'll be very, very difficult to separate them, I would think. So, yeah, that's kind of where things sit right now. Um, I'm not recovering any lead with this process. Uh, I could try, and I probably will try, um, adding a flux, just like I did with the tin thermite. Uh, hopefully the flux will... Um, slow down the reaction, steal heat from it so it doesn't get quite as hot, uh, keep the flux, or keep the slag molten, or help it become molten, and, and trap the lead, and then the lead hopefully can agglomerate into a puddle in the center. So I may try some reactions with some flux, although I'm not going to do too many of these if it's not looking like it's working, because I'm probably spreading a lot of lead vapor around the environment here, which is not a good thing. So, yeah, if it doesn't look like I can get this reaction to work fairly quickly, I may abandon it and try something else that's hopefully less rough on the immediate environment and potentially on my lungs if I get a whip of it. Do a good job of staying up with I probably ought to be wearing my respirator when I'm doing this. All right, so let me contemplate fluxes and accumulate some more lead sulfate. All right, guys, full disclosure here, just so nobody accuses me of being a lion, cheating, no good deceiver. Uh, I can't make lead sulfate fast enough to complete my experiments in it. So I've had to buy some, okay? So I got some lead sulfate here. I'm making a whole lot of tin oxide. That's coming along fast and furious. But like I think I said at the beginning of this video, there's not that much lead in modern electronics. So even though I'm accumulating tin oxide really, really fast here, separating it from electronics, I'm not getting rid of pittance of lead sulfate. So it's just not enough for me to continue experimenting with recovering the lead. So I've bought some uh, lead sulfate here. It is actually used by artists as a base for pigments. They'll crush this in a mortar and pestle with various pigments and oils and come up with their own custom colors. I guess it's still a thing to use lead paint if you're an artist, but it's been phased out everywhere else. But uh, yeah, so I bought some lead sulfate. And I'll tell you what, this stuff is dirt cheap, which is another reason that leads me to believe recovering the lead may not be economical. If you can buy this stuff dirt cheap, and I'm having so much trouble making it, eh, I don't know. It may not be worth it at your end. But anyway, the rest of the experiments I'm going to do with lead sulfate are going to be done with this stuff because, well, it's a lot easier to get a hold of than trying to recover it from electronics. It's, maybe it's just my electronics that I've got, but there ain't that much lead in there. I'm sorry. Okay. So just so you know, for what you see from now on, it's going to be done with this stuff. Yeah, so here's my latest batch of lead sulfide. It, it doesn't amount to much, especially once I dry it out. It's not going to be much. So we're going to have to continue using the store-bought stuff for the bulk of my experimentation. But you know what? I am thinking, I mean, this stuff looks really light and fluffy. Um, this stuff a little bit clumpy. So you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a rethink about why different batches burn at different rates. I'll bet the light, fluffy stuff is what burns faster than the kind of clumpy stuff. I'll just bet you. That is, is a big factor in the burn rate right there. So, yeah. Okay. But I'm still going to investigate fluxes and try that once or twice and see if it gets me anywhere before I move on to something else. All righty. It is very quiet around the farm right now. There's nobody here except me. 
but that won't last long. So uh, while things are quiet, I think I'm going to try and mix up another batch of this lead sulfate. It's not thermite. I'm not sure what the reaction's called, but uh, yeah, lead sulfite, lead sulfate reacting with aluminum. And we're going to make a flux this time. We're going to add some flux to it to try and uh, steal heat from this reaction, slow it down, tame it, and hopefully the flux will capture the lead that should be released by this reaction. And uh, we'll be able to recover it. We'll see. We'll see if this works or not. I'm going to make about 30% by weight flux in this batch. So let me get started. I will uh, tell you uh, exactly how much of what I put in it, and we'll see how it goes when it gets lit off. Might work, might not. Okay, so we're going to make a fairly large charge of this stuff, which I'm a little bit scared about, but <laughs> we're going to do 30 grams of lead sulfate. We're going to need the extra heat to melt the flux, okay? So we're going to do a larger charge than I have been. And this stuff is dense since it's a lead salt. It doesn't take much to make 30 grams. And I have been, uh, my small batches of lead sulfate, I've been recovering. I've been adding to this commercially bought stuff. Just dumping it right here in this container and mixing it up good. So this container is now a mixture of the commercially bought stuff and my own recovered lead sulfate. Okay, so there we go. That's close enough to 30 for me. We're going to put in 8.8 .8 grams of aluminum. I thought about trying to tame this mixture by going either fuel rich or fuel lean. The aluminum is the fuel, by the way. But I decided to just go with a stoichiometric mixture and then try to tame it with a flux. So we need 8.8 .8 grams. We need to get this up to 38.8, basically. And unlike the lead sulfate, the aluminum flake is really, really light and fluffy. more a little bit more again that's 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 close enough I'm sure okay 38.8 is where we want to be okay now just like I used for the um, tin thermite we're going to use Chapman flux thinner because it is mostly uh, fluorospar which is a really good material for making a flux. So we're going to go with this. Clean my spoon off so I don't put lead sulfate in there. Let me tear the scale here. No, I don't want to turn it off. I want to tear it. All right. So we want 9.3 grams of the Chapman flux thinner. And you know, I'm making this up off the top of my head. I don't know if this flux is going to work or if this is the right amount of flux. But we're going to try it. I don't know if fluxing is going to work at all. 9.3. That's that's pretty close. All right. Well, a little over. That's close enough. All right. And then we're going to add some silicon dioxide in the form of very finely sifted sand. I think this went through my 40 mesh screen. So we're going to put, what did I say, 2.3 grams of this stuff in there. Oh, a little over. That's fine. All right. That's fine. Okay. So there's our mix. So I will put this in this container here and shake it up really good like I've done with all my thermite mixtures. So we get a good thorough mix. Yeah, lead sulfate, I need to quit putting it in first because it likes to stick to the bottom of the beaker for some reason. 
put it in after the aluminum, I guess. All right, so we'll shake this up good. And we'll take it out and we'll try lighting it with a magnesium ribbon fuse. Now, if that won't work, and I had trouble with the uh, tin thermite when I put a lot of flux in it. I had trouble with it lighting with all that flux in there with the magnesium ribbon fuse. So if it won't light with the fuse, uh, I'll make a starter mix out of aluminum and sulfur just so we don't add any or more lead or anything to this. And uh, we'll try it again and see if that will start it up. I'll probably use a fuel-rich mixture of aluminum and sulfur because it tends to go off like a flash powder. Whereas I'd like it to burn a little slower and drop, you know, like 3,000 degree aluminum on this stuff. And that should start it up. If it won't, if it won't light with the magnesium ribbon, it might. This stuff is, this stuff is energetic. All right, so let's repair to the great outdoors and set this stuff off. Well, I've got the farm to myself, which is a rare event. All right, let's see how this goes. The wind is a little bit variable, but it's more or less coming from behind the camera. Anyway, that's the direction I'm going to run. And uh, the camera can stay put and watch this. If I have to get, you know, due to the variable wind direction, if I have to run off out of view, well, the camera will see all. So as per usual, got my magnesium ribbon, going to angle it so that hopefully I can get away before any burning magnesium drops on that pile. Let me double check the camera, see what we're seeing. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's get her lit. My running shoes on. And I'm going to get much further away. Oh, it lit. It's burning slow, though. All right, the uh, the flux seems to be doing its job. It's burning fairly slowly. Maybe a little too slowly. I might have to cut back on the flux. Although, we'll see. We'll see what the results of this test are. Maybe not. Maybe slow burning is what we want, huh? Well, I don't know. It doesn't look much different than a fast burn. Let me move the camera up. Now that the fumes are dissipating. Downwind. Closer look at it. Still red hot. I don't know if that's showing up out here in the bright sunlight, but everything's still red hot down there. Huh. Oh, the heat. Yeah. Woo, the heat. That's going to have to cool down a little bit. Then we'll poke around in it and see if there's any uh, any lead metal there. If not, we may have to move on and try something else. Because that, that actually burned a whole lot slower than I was expecting. And I would think probably not hot enough to vaporize the lead. So, hopefully, there's actually some lead there. All right. Let that cool down, maybe for an hour or so, and then poke around in it. All right, this has had a chance to cool down quite a bit. Let's poke through it. I do see some balls of stuff that kind of look like maybe balls of metal. Also, we've got a hard slag here, which in the past we have not had a hard slag. We just had a light, light fluffy slag. It's like we didn't get a complete burn. There's some unburned material here. So that, that slag was definitely stealing some heat from it. I'm looking at, I'm looking at a piece of the slag under the light here. And it looks like there are balls of metal in it. Let me, uh, let me break that up and sort through it, and we'll see if we can find any actual lead in there. So I took the big chunks of slag out of the uh, flower pot and I've been busting them up here and there are balls of metal 
all through it. All through it. There's a ball of metal, a couple balls of metal, kind of joined together. There's a big glob of metal right there. The balls of metal there. Ball of metal right there. So, yeah, we got some metal out of this reaction. Finally. Finally. We didn't vaporize everything. We got some metal. But, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure this is all lead. Some of these blobs are awfully light. That blob is awfully light. Uh, some of these smaller blobs, I think, are heavier than it. So I'm thinking this might be mostly melted aluminum here. And some of these smaller blobs here, they're so dense, that's probably mostly melted lead. But, uh, yeah, it's not working quite right. It, it, it didn't agglomerate into a nice blob like I got with the flux tin thermite. So, I mean, I could play around with the formula. A little bit of the flux and the amount. But uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we need to uh, try something else. You know, the say, you know, you got the old saying of, you know, to a man whose only tool is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Well, I don't want to get into that mindset with the thermite reaction. Yeah, it worked great with the tin, but, but I'm having so much trouble with it with the lead. Uh, it might be time to try something else. Uh, maybe we need to go to some sort of traditional smelting type reaction over in the foundry furnace. You know, I thought about taking this stuff, putting it in the foundry furnace with some flux and seeing what kind of metal we can uh, flux out of it in the foundry furnace. But I thought if we're going to use the foundry furnace, we might as well just switch to some sort of traditional smelting method and see if we can recover the lead that way. Uh, probably it would be a little easier on the environment, less chance of vaporizing it, and uh, yeah, I think that might be the way to go. Yeah, there's a lot of balls of metal in there, but as to what they are, aluminum or lead or a mixture of both, I don't know. So, yeah, so I think we're going to try doing some more traditional smelting type stuff. So, in the next video, we'll do that. I'll do a little research on uh, what kind of uh, flux we need to smelt um, lead sulfate, and we'll see if we can get our lead back out of the sulfate that way. Anyway, I hope you found this video entertaining, educational, inspirational, informative, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see the future videos where we try to get lead another way, and we're going to get back into recovering gold and silver from e-waste, too, down the road. So subscribe to see those future videos. Check out my two other channels. Electro Geek 64 and Mike's Lapidarian Fossils. You might find something interesting there to keep you occupied, too. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'd appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.